Hello CIT 100 students and welcome to Databases 1. It's very often in CIT 100 that I can start modules by saying some grand statement such as you should care about X. It's everywhere in today's modern age. Well databases is again one of those technologies that we're using constantly and as a student who wants to acquire potentially skills for a project of their own or their own business or if they want to work with or for someone that institution or that project probably has a relational database somewhere in there and the more you can know about how they're structured the more useful you'll be at accomplishing handy things with these tools computers we have relational databases at the Community College of Allegheny County. Your bank is storing your financial information in a special financial relational database. We might be buying tickets to fun events, in which case listings and available seats are all stored in a relational database for you to access. Interestingly, a good way to learn about what is a relational database is to think about how the data is structured. So if we were checking this sports statistics website, we would see that the various sport-related statistics are stored by player in a data table. In fact, if I pull up a spreadsheet here, such as uh, one that we'll be building in this course, in this module, you can see that online, even though we think we're just looking up scores, we are actually interacting with a relational database. It stores information in tables, rows and columns, and those tables are related. For example, I want to know more about um, S. Crosby. And if I click the name, I am zoomed to another page with a table. But these tables, they are related, but it's not like this is just a cookie cutter out of this other table. They have to connect names and players and locations, and that's what a relational database does, is it takes the principle of organizing data in tables and blows it up into a scale in which many, many different users, perhaps across the globe, can access that data reliably, not only access, but read, uh, read and write uh, from that, that, uh, that data in small quantities and large quantities, uploading videos or text or audio, entire documents. These are all content components that we can store in a relational database. So you may be thinking, well, this seems like a lot. I'm not going to be designing a database to store sports scores about major national teams. I'd like to illustrate to you that the concepts are, in fact, identical. They are scaled to a global scale on many internet sites, but the principles of organizing data into tables is universal. And so, in this particular module, we will be using a database program called LibreOffice Base, which is free and open source, to create a database storing information about music albums that we find interesting. So, I would like to leave it here and give you a chance to download LibreOffice, which is a full office suite. It is free and open source, and it is a competitor to the Microsoft Corporation's Office Suite and the database application that has been uh, sold by Microsoft since 1992 is a really, really uh, unpleasant program to interact with. So we're going to opt for the free and much more sanity-provoking piece of software, LibreOffice Base, which is featured in this little window here. And I will walk you through exploring a database that I will build with you along the tutorial called Collected Albums with a file extension ODB. So go ahead and keep following, trucking down this particular module guide, and I'll pick you up on the flip side.